We are back at a gig. You see, my friend. If you don't know, now you know this. Hey, say sounds what they call me. For those that don't know, I am a 90s baby. I'm a 90s kid. I grew up on WB, WB Kids, Disney, Fox Kids, and Nickelodeon. I've been following this whole Dan Snyder, Nickelodeon thing for a minute now. And I watched quite on the set when it first came out. And I have some opinions. Um, so yeah, this is not going to be easy, but I felt like this needed. Let's go. Hey, it's Boogie. <coughs> I play T-Bow on Nickelodeon's I Carly. Oh, it's Boogie! I to watch the Quiet On Set program, and I reached out to Dan to see if it was something that he'd be willing to discuss. You did! I'm pleased to say that he said yes. Dan, how are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, I really appreciate you reaching out. Why do you look like Brethren from... <laughs> who that dude from Game of Thrones? Y'all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I know what? No, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna flame him. I ain't gonna flame him. Go ahead. And giving me the opportunity to talk to you about the, what we saw over the last two nights. I'm really glad you're here because I believe this is nah for sure. He look like Mick Fo nah, son. He look like Mick Foley, son. You sure look like Mick Foley? Yo, that's crazy. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, we've got a lot. Sorry, of Mick Foley. I love you. Um, but before I dive into my list of topics that I'd like to discuss, is there anything you'd like to start off with? Absolutely. Watching over the past two nights was very difficult me facing my past behaviors, um, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret, and I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. Let's talk about the massages. No, let's talk about why are you doing this interview? Why? Oh. Why, why is Boogie doing this? Did, did, anybody, did anybody ask for Ja Rule? Like, something going crazy. Where's Ja Rule? Like, nobody asked for Boogie. Why is Boogie? You didn't call Oprah. Well, I don't care for Oprah. You ain't call... I don't care for Gail neither. God dang it. Balter Walters ain't here no more. Barbara, uh, Diane, so you ain't called none of the, none of the real interviewers to get a real interview. Like, you call Boogie? That's let you know off rip. This ain't to be taken serious. You called Boogie. You went, you went in tragedy and you called Boogie. Cause I know God name where Boogie ain't call you. Stop it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. Watching the content yesterday, it was disturbing. Yeah. It was, wrong. it was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. It was the wrong thing to do. I'd never do it today. I'm embarrassed that I did it then. I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation. And even additionally, I apologize to the people who were walking around Video Village or what. Apologize to whom? Just this is a blanket statement right here. <laughs> like I just ap apologize to whom? All right, we won't get into it though. Whatever they happened, because there were lots of people there who witnessed it, who also may have felt uncomfortable. So I owe them an apology as well. Yeah. Dan, talk to me about the writers' room. From what I saw, not cool. No, no, and <laughs> I, I don't mean to cut you off, but if I can cut right to the chase, let me just say. I don't mean to cut you off because I wrote what you're about to say. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me cut this script in half. <laughs> let's let's cut, take out the cliff notes. Let me get straight to my line here. Line? Oh, yeah, I forgot. I'm cre I created and directed this. I don't have a director. I am the director. No writer should ever feel uncomfortable in any writer's room, ever, period, the end, no excuses. Um, most TV writers, comedy writers have been in writer's rooms and they are aware that a lot of times there are inappropriate jokes made and inappropriate topics come up. Uh, but the fact that I participated in that, especially when I was leading the room, um, it embarrasses me. I shouldn't have done it. Um, wait, wait, hold up, oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Talk about, hold up. <laughs> we, ain't doing, we ain't doing this today. We are not doing this in the year of our Lord 2024. You say that I participated in it? I participated in it, my friend, not my friend, but beloved, from what people have said, you were the leader. Yes, you were the leader. You cultivated that environment. You were the one that provoked it. I can tell you why it hurts really bad for me. 
Um, I remember very clearly my early experiences, my first experiences in the entertainment business. I was green, I was scared, I was excited. It, it meant the world to me that I was getting those opportunities. And I went in and I got lucky because they were great. My first couple of experiences were fantastic. And the fact that, the, and the fact that I didn't pay that forward to every employee that walked through my door, yeah. it, it, it hurts my heart because I should have. And I wish I could go back and fix that. Um, in the writer's room, there's no doubt that sometimes those jokes went beyond the pale and I said things that went too far or made practical jokes that went too far and um, that was wrong and that, that was because you know I was an inexperienced producer, I was immature, wouldn't happen today but um, I'm just really sorry it happened. Yeah. Now we know you've had a Hold up! So, Boogie, bo they, they call you Boogie. Boogie, you heard all that, and you didn't have no follow-up questions. You had no nothing you needed to clarify on. And again, talk about you know I feel ashamed that I participated in it, like you did not create it. <laughs> then you talk about all oh, the practical jokes went too far. To, it's like, well, what's a practical joke about you? According to a female writer, you forcing them. Or, or making them bend over a, a table and acting like they're getting itemized. Put an S on what I'm on front of it. Itemized. What's the practical joke in that? What's the practical joke in asking a female, oh, didn't you used to do porn? Didn't you used to do that? I'm, I'm almost positive you used to do that. While there's other men in the room telling a female writer, didn't you, I, I swear, didn't you used to tell me you used to do porn? What's the practical joke in that? Explain that to me. Like, I want you to explain these things you were doing, not just a blanket statement. Explain to me exactly these things that you did and what was your thought process? Why did you do it? Were you compensating because you weren't loved as a child? Did you not get enough hugs? Was it because you didn't get enough girls? So now that you're older, you get to now bully the uh, bully women because you got bullied as a kid. Like, explain to me what your thought process was as this young, immature writer. Even though you've been in the business as long as you have, you started at head of the class. So, <clears throat> so explain to me how, like, how how that happened. Why did you do that? What was the mentality behind that? No. Not, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna explain. Okay, all right, go ahead. Success over two decades, thousands of people have worked with you for you. Okay. Let's speak directly to the people who did not have a good experience with you. Okay, I would like to speak to those people. Like who? It's like that's just a blanket statement, to, a question to ask. Like who? <laughs> Are we talking about the the like the the two female riders? That basically you forced to quit because you didn't advocate to have them being paid properly. You overworked them. You teased them. You bullied them. Or we want to talk about the the uh, editors that you forced to work overtime from 8 a.m. to like 12 p.m. Didn't want them to have any food breaks, lunch breaks, bathroom breaks. And then when the, the editor, young lady, Passed out. You're still asking, well, how the, the show going to be finished? You want to talk about that? You want to talk about the kids? All the kids that felt unsafe? You'd making them doing pranks, making them doing skits, doing all kinds of sexual in your windows. Do we want to talk about that? Who are we talking about? Because I hate that anybody worked for me and didn't have a good time. You know me. You've been on my sets. Um, and that's why you're here. Boogie. Directly to the people who did not have a good experience with you. Okay. I would like to speak to those people because I hate that anybody worked for me and didn't have a good time. You know me. You've been on my sets. Um, look, I've had some employees that have worked for me for 10 years, some more than 20 years, who would work with me again. But um, not everybody. There's a still a significant number that didn't have a great time working for me. So my batting average isn't nearly high enough in that area. Um, and the way they wouldn't get the best of me is that I would let the pressure 
of doing 40 or even more episodes per year, I would let that pressure get to me, which a good boss should never ever do. Are there specific things that you were doing? Sh sure, I would. Uh, wow, an actual follow-up question. Wow, Ashley being specific. Good job, Boogie. Wow, awesome. Yeah, anything in particular you want to talk about, Daniel? Snap at people sometimes. Mm -hmm. I would be Snapping snarky people. when I could have given them a nicer snarky. answer. Um, I would not give people the time that they needed. I would be in too big mm. a hurry to get on to the next thing I had to do. And mm. watching that show, it made me, there were so many times I wanted to pick up a phone and call some of those people and say, I'm so sorry and let's talk about it. And I, I wish you'd had a better time and I wish I could have shown you a better experience. Yeah. Why didn't you? Pick up the phone, the call is free. <laughs> 1-800-SAFE-AUTO-PLAY-SAFE-SAFE-AUTO. Just gave us a free promotion. Um, oh, boogie. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> what are we doing, man? Get the fuck out of my face, man. Come on. Watching that show, it made me, there were so many times I wanted to pick up a phone and call some of those people and say, I'm so sorry and let's talk about it. And I, I wish you'd had a better time and I wish I could have shown you a better experience. Yeah. So you mean to tell, see this is, you know what? Let me take over the interview boogie since you don't want to, oh, I'm, I'm my bad, you're following the script. So you can't deviate from the script because if you did, Dan will yell at you then like he used to do. Okay. Um, my follow up question would be, Okay, well, you telling me nobody at the time let you know of these things that they were they were feeling that at the time, the writers, the producers, the editors, the child actors, the parents of the child actors, you mean to tell me that nobody brought anything across your desk and tried to address certain things? You're telling me that that didn't happen? Is that what you're saying? That after watching the documentary, now, oh, epiphany, oh my God, I didn't know all these things. I didn't know I was doing all these things. I didn't know I couldn't do that. <laughs> because I find that to be interesting because don't you, didn't you have lawsuits against you? Was that not a thing? Didn't you have lawsuits? Didn't you have people that force you out of directing? Directly with the actors by the mid 2010s because of how you were treating your workers, but you're just not finding this out. That was just a follow up question I would have. Boogie, I'm helping you out, brother to brother. I'm gonna help you out with this one. Okay, I got you. Now, you've written hundreds of episodes, thousands of jokes have been told. Yeah. But currently, where we are. Uh -huh. Some people think that some of those jokes are inappropriate for children. Mm -hmm. Stop. Some people, so you don't think, okay. Here's a better way to phrase this. I'm gonna help you out, Boogie. I'm gonna help a brother out. Instead of phrasing it as some people think, I will phrase it as Some of those jokes that was done on these TV shows were inappropriate. Can you enlighten me on the method or the ideology or the reasons behind these certain jokes and specific jokes I would bring up like Amanda Taint or the feet or having child children or young teenagers in compromising positions like I Carly or victorious, or I don't know, uh, 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 Ariana Grande holding potatoes, adding like there are certain inanimate objects, or on a, on her back with water, water spilling on herself and moaning. Can you explain what this joke is for? What the reason behind these jokes are? Why did you think they was funny? Why did you think that was proper? for young children and teens to do for a kid show. Can you explain that? I'm just, I'm just helping you out, Boogie. I'm sorry, go ahead. What do you think of that? All these jokes that you're speaking of, 
um, that the show covered over the past two nights. Every one of those jokes was written for a kid audience. Wrong. Kids thought they were funny. Wrong. And only funny. Wrong. Okay. Um, now we have some adults looking back at them 20 years later through their lens, and they're looking at them in the like the kids that worked on the show. There are now adults saying, oh, you know, I don't think that's appropriate for, for a kid's show. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem with that. If, if that's how anyone feels, let's cut those. Wait, things. you mean to tell me? See, now I'm getting with. So you mean to tell me you watch some of those jokes? It, cause I, they kept the light on a documentary because it probably didn't want to trigger certain people. You mean to tell me you saw some of that stuff in that doc and you didn't say, oh, I was wilding. Like, I wasn't really. Yeah, I don't know what I was on. Or I was being childish. I was. You gonna you gonna say it was just it was just it was just a prisoner of his time. Just back then, we just we didn't know, or we were just, you know, we just we weren't thinking about anything but the children. That's that's your excuse. Okay. All right, Daniel. Folks out of the show, just like I would have done. 20 years ago or 25 years ago. I cut it. I want my shows to be popular. I want everyone to like the more people who like the shows, the happier I am. Yeah. So if there's anything in a show that needs Hold to up. Be okay, again, you you give people time that they're telling themselves every time. So in regards to the inappropriate jokes, your mind goes to I want to make sure the people that are viewing it are having a good time. I want to make sure the people that are viewing it are, are being entertaining being entertained that's where your mind goes instead of man i wish i didn't put some of these child actors in two compromising positions boy i wish i didn't put these actors these young minds and these uh, young entertainers in 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 bad situations and compromising positions you know I, I i wish i didn't write write me and my writing staff didn't write certain jokes that we knew were inappropriate but we thought was funny and we just wanted to see what we could get away with. Now, I will say he is right because it's not a one man show. This is stuff that executives, that networks, that presidents, CEOs had to approve and they were complicit. This is not just all that's hate on Daniel Day. No, this is a network thing. This is a system thing this is a hollywood thing that you had a show runner for over 20 25 years getting away with certain things and nobody did nothing and especially the higher ups daniel's bosses 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 did nothing because they were getting the money so that's all they cared about. So yeah, I agree with Daniel. These jokes were getting approved. These shows, these episodes were getting approved. So it's not just all on Daniel. It's a whole system. That's the problem. Daniel's just a symptom of the real illness, which is Hollywood and the system and how they they exploit not only entertainers not only actors singers but everyone involved because it's all about the almighty dollar for these corporations but keeping it on nickelodeon they are the issue daniel is just a part of the issue but nickelodeon is the real issue but they need a face they need a face for the issue, so they're going to put Daniel out there. Which I understand. But it's, it's, it's more than that. We need the names of these, these executives and office heads and vice presidents and CEOs that was in charge letting this slip on by. But I continue because it's upsetting somebody let's cut it so i think it's big for you to say with your work mm -hmm. if it's viewed as that today you don't have a problem cut it cut it i mean that's a solution you already the last thing you I already made the money what are you gonna cut you already made the money off it there's nothing to cut 
I mean, of course, you probably do want to cut it so that you can erase all this, like, you know, your tweet, talk asking people from the Sam and Cat show, the kids, to show their feet. Yeah. Uh, you probably do want to, but somehow you still have that up. I don't know how. But you probably do want to erase all the things, like, you know, how America does when it comes to racism and certain things. <laughs> you probably do want to erase it. You blame it on C CRT. <laughs> you probably do want to erase it so people will forget. Want to ever do yeah. is put any content in a show that's going to upset my audience and make them want to turn off the TV. Why would I ever forget your audience? What about the child actors? What about the people and the employees and the writers and the producers that were working with you that did not feel safe? It felt like they weren't, they weren't comfor comfortable enough to go to you. Why is everything about the audience? And that's what it is. It lets you know the mentality of Daniel. Everything is about the audience, the audience, the audience. That's why you treated the people the way you did. Because that's all you cared about. Because the more the audience likes it, the more rage you get, which means the more money you get, which means the more shows you can write, which means the more shows you can be a tyrant tiring at everything is about the audience after audience what about the the the, 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 the actors like angelique gates bates i'm sorry angelique bates bring it talking about how she was violated spit on yelled at abused at 12 13 years old Then cut from the show, even though she was the only black woman, black girl on the show. On all that. See, these are the things we need to talk about. These are the, the um, let's reverse the tables. Let's turn the tables. Let's make you uncomfortable. But see, this is why you brought Boogie to interview you. Because you know he's not going to, because he's, he's reading the script that you wrote. Let's make you uncomfortable. Let's get let's put you in the hot seat. Let's see how you deal with having all the skeletons in your closet, all the skeletons in your closet on front street in front of you and having to explain that. All this stuff. I'm so tired of the audience, the audience, after audience. First of all, the kids, it's not hard to entertain us. This isn't this hard job. Like it's a, it's like the, the, the audience. I'm just so worried about the. Uh, like it's we're their kids. We're easily impressionable, and that's maybe why you decided to do kids' children TV shows because they're easy to manipulate and tell what to do. You and this goddamn audience. I want to do that. That makes sense. I want to give you an opportunity to kind of elaborate on something. Okay. The thought process from the series is you had the power to just write a joke and no matter what, it's going on TV. You just had that type of power. Is that true? The the notion that I had the power to just produce whatever I wanted and have it air is completely false. Okay. There were many, many levels of scrutiny. Okay. We had executives in LA. We had executives in New York. So two coasts. Two coasts okay. of, of Both approval, coasts. yes. And, not, and by the way, approval at every stage, really. Okay. And I'm talking about wardrobe, I'm talking about makeup, sound, sets, dialogue, jokes, everything. Now when you say approval, these obviously that's a hierarchy, not your no, colleagues right. or people in the room. Okay. No, no, not my colleagues. No, these are my bosses. Bosses and then their bosses and then their bosses. And they're approving all of this stuff. Okay. okay? And we're also shooting it in front of all sorts of adults and caregivers and the set teacher and, and the families, everybody's watching it. And if anybody had said anything, hey, we don't like that. That's mm, oh my God, stop fucking lying. If anybody has said anything, like I don't know, Brian Hearn's mother that spoke about, why are you making my black kid in his first sketch acting like he's selling crack with uh with girl scout cookies 
why are you making my kid being a, a leotard talking about um young little fetus being in tight clothes? Why are you making my young child put himself in peanut butter and have dogs lick it off him? And even when he's saying audibly, he's uncomfortable. Oh, that did happen. And when the mother spoke up, they got cut. But I just wish somebody would have told me. I wish I knew. Oh, like the father of Drake Bell, who spoke up about the the nut ass freak ball peck. How why is why is this man keep touching my son like this inappropriately? Why he keep being around my son? Oh, you must be well. You know he's gay, right? You must be homophobic. Yet yeah, somehow they didn't know. If they would have stopped it right then, maybe, just maybe, Drake Bell wouldn't have got it assaulted like he did. If they stopped right there when a concerned parent brought up to your attention, oh, you know what? Maybe not your attention because you're too busy, right? To the executives, whoever's attention, what's going on? But yet you continue to let it go on because you use homophobia to excuse inappropriateness with a, a, a parent and not going to speak up unless they truly feel like they need to protect their child. A parent's going to speak up because it would have protect a child. So to tell a parent to leave it alone and just dismiss them Again, I agree with Daniel that all this is not just a Daniel Dan Snyder problem. It is a Hollywood network Nickelodeon problem. But to continue to talk about I didn't know. Come on, man. You can't do that plausible deni deniability, bro. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You didn't know? Not appropriate. You then, it would have been cut out. You didn't know, but you knew once the lawsuit went out on Peck to call to call Drake directly. But you didn't know. Okay. Now I'm going to push back a little bit sure. because the series mm -hmm. painted you in this way that you were just the guy that was doing what he wanted and mm -hmm. people were afraid to confront you about things. So say, just humor me, say that you that was the case. What would have been the ultimate way to... Okay, if nobody on the set, if all of the dozens and dozens of adults that were on the set, if they didn't say anything, if my bosses said, if they insisted, you gotta make a change here, you gotta cut that, I had to do it, I had no choice. Got it. Now this next one. Again, it's like, where is the empathy for the children? Uh, it's everything is about the show, the show, the show, the show. What about, man, I sure don't want these children to feel uncomfortable. Boy, I sure don't want these children to be violated. Boy, I'm sure, I, I sure don't want these children to feel like there's nowhere they can run to or, or, or no one to talk to when he, when he feel like they are truly being assaulted or violated. I sure don't want that. Notice not once did he ever talk about the children because he worked on children shows. Young teenagers, preteens shows. But never once talked about the children. kind of hit close to home. Mm -hmm. uh, being a new father, I wouldn't be opposed to <coughs> my child being in the entertainment industry. It doesn't matter what age. Yeah. Seeing some of those on air dares. I just want to say this. I like this situation right here. I hate this. First of all, why you got an undershirt under a shirt? Like wear a wife be like wear like brother, like just wear a black shirt. 
and put a, a gold chain on. That way it matches with what this this is right here. Like, come on, baby. Come on. I'm going to learn you. A peach shirt? Why you got a peach shirt on? Oh, that might be Salmon. But then you got 10 brown shoes and pants. Come on, boy. Come on. Like Pops, you got to learn how to coordinate. Come on, baby. Seeing it now from where you are now in your life. What do you think of that? I think that some of the on-air dares went too far. I think they pushed the envelope too far. Not all of them, not most of them, but some did. Nickelodeon wanted to do their version of Fear Factor. At the time we were shooting all that, so I was tasked with doing these on-air dares with the All That cast. So we get with the writers and we come up with all these ideas and it's hard to do because we don't have the budget of Fear Factor sure. and we can't put the kids in dangerous situations like the adults are put in. So kids. it was hard to, yeah, hard to come up with stuff. But we would come up with all these ideas of dares they could do. We would uh, uh, give them to the network and they would say, one, tell us the ones that were okay. Right. Those are the ones we shot, those are the ones that aired. At the time, I had no indication that any kid ever had a problem with them. But when I was watching the show over the past two nights, I now know that there were kids who did have problems with the on-air dares. And it breaks my heart, and I'm so sorry. I am so sorry to any kid who ever had to do a dare or anything that they didn't want to do or weren't comfortable doing. We went out of our way to make sure they were safe and, and that everything was done properly, but if a kid was scared and didn't want to do it, kids shouldn't have had to do it, yeah. period, the end. Right. And if I had known at the time, I, I would have changed it on the spot. Now we also saw the series highlight two... <sighs> Boogie! Boogie. Again, I would have did a follow-up question. Okay, you didn't know, cool. So let me ask you this. There wasn't one point to where you saw these children doing certain things like having a whole scorpion put in their mouth and you said maybe we should not do that or oh, and do you remember some of the skits that or some of the pranks or whatever that did not get approved can you do you remember those because if this was getting getting approved what did not get approved and again what in your warped mind made you think putting peanut butter on a kid and having dogs lick, lick it off of them? At what point did you think that was cool? And speaking of Nickelodeon, since you brought it up, so it was Nickelodeon's idea for fear, the fear factor. Oh, okay. And they were probably, were they pressuring you to do this show? Did you combat this at all? Because you said that you could have put them in, could, could have put the kids in any dangerous situations and you didn't have the budget. So what was your conversation like when you, when they brought this to you? Did you say, oh man, I don't know. I don't know if I really want to have these kids, you know, go through these different things that, that could traumatize them for life. I mean, fair factor, you have grown adults doing stuff for money. They, they know what they're doing. These are kids that are probably don't even know the skits or the, the pranks that they're doing. I don't know if that's a good idea. Did you say that? Or say, oh my God, that's a great idea. Oh my God. Like, what did you say? What did you say when, when, when y'all wrote, when you wrote to have, Grown ass men shave their hair and put it in milk for someone to drink. What, like, what was the thought process of that? Like, what? These are just things I want to know. Know your stars. Ain't that what you used to do? All that. Know your stars. And what? That's just things I want to know former writers of yours, two women, mm -hmm. who spoke about a wage discrepancy. Now, I know that you don't divvy out salaries. How do you know? Talk to me about that part. Because you wrote your script. Well, you're correct. I have nothing to do with paying writers. I never have. I've never made a writer's deal. And of all the writers I've been in the writer's room with, I never even knew how much most of them were getting paid. Yeah, but we saw these two women who were writers for you sharing one salary. How mm -hmm. does that happen? 
It's very simple. There's a common practice in television when hiring writers, if you have a spot for a new writer, sometimes you'll go to two writers and say, hey, if you two new writers for your first job are willing to share a salary, you can both have the job. Mm. They have the opportunity. That is illegal. And you to say, yes, that sounds good, or no, no thank you. In this That is illegal, but go ahead. Case, it was two women writers. I've done another show where that teaming was done with two male writers and they split a salary. I did another show where it was a male and a female writer and they split a salary. So and these are all first time writers. All first time writers looking for their first gig. Got it. Now in this But you don't Tevi, so you don't you don't control the 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 the, the payroll yet you worked on multiple shows with multiple writers that have had that happen even though it was illegal. And then when the one of the women writers brought this up to whoever it was, the union or whatever, explain to, again, I'm going to do your job for you, Boogie. So explain to me the accusation by one of the women writers that said when they went to the, the appropriate channels to stop that from happening, you called them and said, are you trying to sabotage my show? Can you Can you elaborate on that? Did you make that phone call to that young writer, that young woman writer who wanted to have equal pay and wanted to have appropriate pay? Or can you speak to the second season that she did, which she only lasted four episodes, to where she had to quit, but you wanted her to work an additional, what, 16, was it six weeks, 11 weeks? With no pay? Can you elaborate on that as well? Did you, that would that was out of your control? Did you fight for your, did you fight for your writers? Talk about new writers. I don't care if they're new writers. Did you fight for your writers? When you found out that this was happening, did you try to fight for them to try to give them more pay? Or you thought it was cool because they're new writers? What were your thoughts on this? Do you think that's cool? Do you think that's appropriate? Again, these are just follow-up questions I have, Boogie. I'm helping you out, brother. I got you. Series, they also highlighted two black actors who said that they felt overlooked. Now, I want to be clear. I'm never going to speak on anyone else's journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can talk about my experience, how my experience was with you, what I saw prior to working with you. But again, I don't want to speak on anyone's journey. I Nobody asked you. Can we start with that? Nobody asked you. We're talking about the children and how they felt they were treated at the shows that Daniel Schneider was directing. We're not talking about you. We're talking about your Brian Hearns. We're talking about, what was it, uh, Raquel from Amanda Show. When she was having a birthday party and she heard through the grapevine that you yelled and was mad that she got a birthday cake. Who just happened to be the only black person within the cast? Do we want to speak upon that? Where she felt alienated. Do we want to speak upon that? Can we be specific here? But no. Boogie want to talk about how great his experience was. Because that's what this doc was about. It's about how great Daniel was as a boss. I hope he paid you well, Boogie. I hope he did. Because you know. Like I know, the community is going to light your ass up. <laughs> They're going to light your ass up. Now, I'm not going to call you C-O-O-N, but I'm going to call you Arcade. I think that's a more appropriate name for you right now. I'm going to call you Arcade because for Arcade, you need what? Token. You, you know where I'm going with this. Hey, you work on a kid's show. You should know. <laughs> Boogie, I'm going to call you Arcade from now on. 
to talk about. I ain't here to talk about other people's experiences. That's what you should be talking about. You're supposed to be the adult in the room. You should be taking up for these black kids. I ain't here to talk about other people's experiences, what they go through. I got to, I can only talk about what I go through. Why did you? Why weren't you the first one to call Brian Hearns? Why were you the first one to call uh, Rachel or Raquel? Why did what why, why did your mind go to talk to them first? Talk to these kids first. Call them since you called Daniel. Why would your mind go to try to find a talk to them? Talk to the black mother. Talk to the black parents of these kids. Talk to Angelique Bates. Talk to her. Interview her. Why didn't your mind go to talk to? Talk to them. Are you be honored for diversity in your work? Yes. And the reason for that is diversity has always been very important to me in my shows. If ah! I go back to the very first Nickelodeon show I ever made, that's very evident, as it is in the second one. And then the first movie I ever made for Nickelodeon, which starred Keenan and Kel, and every show I did after that had a lead black actor in it. I'm very proud of that. It's very important to me. And not only am I proud that they were in my shows, I'm exceptionally proud of the achievements they've had beyond my shows. And they've gone on to bigger and better things. And that gives me a great sense of pride. Well, something that really kind of bothered you know you know so I you know how they gloss over that one, huh? <laughs> there, there wasn't no I man. I feel real bad for any of these black actors that felt like they were not being treated fairly and felt like they were being uh, prejudiced against. So you know how see, they gloss over that one. They didn't, didn't want to talk about the racism. You know, you know, you see how they didn't even acknowledge it. That is so America. Don't you, don't you want to acknowledge it? Just you know, hey, what, what I've seen, y'all been very nice to the blacks. Y'all been very nice to the black. Well, from what I've seen, Massa, they will be very nice to the blacks. Yeah, you you got a word for diversity, didn't you? Didn't you have a uh, sir out of man playing what was Samuel Jackson's uh, <laughs> character's name in Django? You very acting very Samuel L. Jackson right now in Django, man. Yeah, what else? Didn't even it didn't even didn't even ignite. That's how you know this was scripted. Because they were like, well, how are we going to figure out a way to, to address this without actually addressing it? Let me have Boogie talk about how great experience he had. And then I can just talk about all the great diversity I did to where I don't even have to address the, the racism or the presidents that some of these black actors felt they dealt with. Genius. This genius. So Hollywood. <laughs> so America. Me was how they depicted your relationship with the cast. Yeah, it bothered me too. Yeah, just me being there. Oh, it bothers you too. I knew the dynamic was trust. I understood that in situations. I want to go to that real quick. I want to go back, back to this real quick. I'm not proud that they were in my shows. I'm exceptionally proud of the achievements they've had beyond my shows. And they've gone on to bigger and better things. And that gives me a great sense of pride. Well, something that really kind of bothered me was Bothers how they you. depicted your relationship with the cast. Yeah, it bothered me too. Yeah. Oh, it bothers you too. Oh, it did. That's why you did this sit down interview that you created and wrote and directed. But again, Arcade, shouldn't it bother you more to hear and see multiple kid actors? I don't, you know, I don't feel like continuing to call them kid actors. Multiple actors that one time were kids saying that they didn't feel comfortable. They didn't feel comfortable with Mr. Daniel Snyder. A lot of them didn't. A lot of them didn't. But yet you felt away because they depicted you they depicted Daniel improperly. So you're telling me that all these kids either are lying or their feelings are valid. It's one of the two. So either they're lying or their feelings are valid. Was how they depicted your relationship with the cast. Yeah, it bothered me too. Yeah, just me being there. I knew the dynamic was trust. I understood that. <coughs> in situations where they may have 
had turmoil, whether it be with their families, whether it be other castmates, they came to you versus how they made you look. With that said, didn't you just say the... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <clears throat> didn't you just say the question or statement before I would never want to speak about any other person's experience I can only talk about my experience did you not just say that only to the following question or statement say I don't like how they depict you in terms of how you treated your employees. Did you not just say, I'm not here to talk about anybody else, yet your first thing was to, instead of having Daniel address the certain things that the actors were saying in regards to how he was as a boss, your thing was, well, you was a great boss to me. So I don't know why the, uh, I don't know what these other people are talking about. You were a great boss to me. I don't like how they were depicting like you were just not this great boss. God, come on, arcade. You're being very Pac Miss Pac-Man right now. All right, you're being very Miss Pac-Man right now. Amanda Bynes was brought up in the series oh, and her oh, emancipation and how you were involved. Oh. In Can you talk to us about it a bit? Sure. Um, Amanda was between the ages of 16 and 17, and she wanted to get emancipated from her parents, mm -hmm. which was a fairly common thing with successful young actors, at least at the time. Sure. Um, and she wanted that for herself. So she turned to her team, which included her lawyer, her agent, her manager, her publicist, me, because she included me as part of her team, thought of me that way. We supported her. She tried to get emancipated. It ended up not working out. And she didn't. Well, since we're here, let's stay here for a moment. There was also an incident where she had ran away from home. If yes. You would. Um, can you talk to us a little bit just to clear the air of exactly what happened in that situation? Yes. Uh, one night, it was very late, well after midnight, one or two in the morning, phone rang, I answered, it was Amanda. She was upset, she was in distress, she had had some conflict with her parents, I think her father, and she called me. I was immediately concerned about her safety I called someone who I knew was fairly nearby. That person was able to go and pick her up. Then I knew she was safe. I felt better. She ended up being taken to the police. Well, regardless of what some people may think, I think it... Again, do you not just say, I'm not here to talk about how anybody else felt or their experience. Anywho, two things. One, I'm not here. I'm not. I have no opinion on a man and Bynes situation since she has not spoken publicly from what I've seen and heard. She hasn't said anything and definitely got thoughts towards her. So since she has not said anything, I have no opinion on it. I just hope all positive vibes towards her. That's the first thing. Second thing is, I do find it interesting that the one time you went into detail in regards to the situation was when the person involved, the party involved, hasn't spoken. I find that to be intriguing. The one time that a party has not spoken publicly about a situation, now you want to go into detail about that. Because I'm very, very curious to see what Amanda thinks about that situation today. What she thinks about you today. But we'll probably never get, we'll probably never know because you know what? I'm not here to assume anything, but we'll probably never get to know. It's only positive that you are there for people when they... Oh, say that again. Say that again, Arcade. What you, what you finish? Slop. <laughs> what you been... What you, what, you, what you about to go Pac-Man on him about? Say it again. I you know what? We calling you Pac-Man. Forget Arcade. We calling you Pac-Man. Go ahead, Pac-Man. was fairly nearby. That person was able to go and pick her up. Then I knew she was safe. I felt better. She ended up being taken to the police. Well, regardless of what some people may think, I think it's only positive that you are there for people when they need It's you. only pop. 
It's only positive, Pac-Man? Only positive. All right, Pac-Man, you got it, bro. He went to court when this guy was being tried, Pac. And when Drake walked in, he saw 50 people sitting on the side of the courtroom supporting Pac. A lot of them pretty famous. Where were you? Oh, sorry, you're probably too busy to run your show. Okay, cool. Of course, Drake was devastated that that happened. And, and even more disappointing, 41 of those people wrote letters for Pac, character letters, praising him for who he was and asking for leniency. And they knew that he was guilty. They knew he had confessed to some degree. Mm -hmm. And they still did this. It's just, that's baffling that adults would do that. Yeah. And you know what's even more baffling is that when Drake's dad again brought this up to whoever he did, because he, uh, he never said who he went up to, went up to how he felt about Peck and how he was being around his child, nobody did anything. Again, my question would be, okay, so who do you think Drake's dad went to in regards to this? Who? What is the protocol in regards to when a, when a parent or a child doesn't feel safe? What's the protocol? Did it go to you? Did it go to your PA? Did it go to the, the did it go to their agent? Who did they go to? To talk about these things. Did he go to HR? Is that a thing? Who do you go to? Because again, y'all are all complicit. Stop trying to take away accountability, sir. You're all complicit because Drake's, Drake's dad spoke up. Y'all did nothing. And it is a system issue. It's a bad system. So even if he did not go to you, Whatever systems are in place, protocol is in place, it's a bad system. Because this could have been avoided. This could have been prevented. But the system that you are a part of and help lead caused some of this in regards to what happened to Drake. When I take a any accountability away from Peck, that monster who still should be in jail as we speak, which is another issue I have in regards to this criminal criminal justice system, which somehow you can violate a minor and yet only get what? We got like 16 months, something like that. And was very shortly was able to work on another kid's show on Disney. What kind of criminal justice system allows an adult to violate a minor and yet still can see daylight? But that's another issue. I don't know if people know this, oh. but Drake's mom, a lovely woman who I stay in contact with this day, she came to me at the time and she said, Dan, I'm not good with words like you are and would you help me with my speech for the judge and I said of course and I did and he ended up going to prison and serving his time and yeah that was probably the darkest part of my career and here's the kicker that I really don't get after he got out of prison and was, to my knowledge, a registered sex offender, he was hired on a Disney Channel show. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. Um, I never, yeah, I don't understand. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing it, man. Are you okay? You want to take a minute? No, I'm all right. Let's, let's keep going. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. 
I think we really unpacked some important things. We set the record straight on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Before I let you get out of here, I appreciate the vulnerability that you use in knowing that there's definitely things that you would have and should have done differently. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that we haven't discussed? Anything that if you could go back and navigate the, the journey differently? I would discuss, I would have chose a different, what, why do you have an undershirt under a sweater? You should have just took the sweater off and just had the undershirt. You would have been good. I'm sorry. That's just something, uh, that, wh what you got on is way more important than this guy in the interview. So at this point, I, it was like, what, what, was, what is there to talk about? Like, I don't know. Again, it's not just a Nickelodeon thing, like I said. It's a dis like how there's no way you should be reg a registered sex for, for with children and be able to get a job working with children. Now, if you want to make an argument that he still should be able to get a job, that's I'm not here. I am. But you're working with children on a children's show, and you were still able to work. On Sweet Life for Zach and Cody? And then according to the doc, the people that were running, running it were asking you, oh, how did that situation go? It's documented. What do you mean? Oh, how did that situation go? Like, it's not documented. Like, he didn't go to jail. He didn't, you, didn't, you, 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 you didn't care that much to actually look into it? Just went by his word. Well, like, what the fuck? Like, again, it's not just a Nickelodeon problem. This is a Disney problem. Disney, you next. Oh, don't believe you. Just looking at, oh my God, look at Nickelodeon. Oh, you next. Oh, you next. Oh, y'all. What Cat Williams said at the beginning of 2024. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody about to get exposed this year. Oh, we about to be in a revealing year. Yeah, it's a Hollywood issue, man. Look at all our child, not all, but look at a lot of these child actors. Why do you think they turn out the way they do? Hmm? Now, it's not the sole reason, but a lot of it has to do with how they are treated as these child actors. It turns out by their parents, by having to be the breadwinners at nine, and have the sole responsibility of carrying and putting their family on their back at 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's these systems, these, these, these sets, these networks exploiting these kids, violating child labor laws, making them do all kinds of things they don't want to do, threatening, threatening them. All kinds of things. We, got, we, we can go all the way back to Shirley Temple. Mm-hmm. Oh, you don't. You just, oh, my God. You, you look at that Shirley Temple. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Go all the way back to Shirley Temple, man. Sick. Demonic. Hollywood is sick. Demo demonic. It is. No child should have to go through any of that. Not to mention society and all these different parties and drugs and everything. And yeah. And again, I'm just I'm just taking it light. I still got a whole video. So we're gonna break all this down. It just I'm taking my time. Taking my time. But we got a whole video to where we're truly gonna break this down. But uh there's just a teaser. There's nothing more to say. Um uh, shout out to Pac-Man. We're gonna call you Pac-Man. Daniel Schneider. Uh, reaction to Quiet on the Set, which again, I would definitely advise to watch Quiet on the Set. Uh if you can deal with some of the subject matter, which is very disturbing, especially episodes three and four. Um, but I told my homegirl, don't watch this. <laughs> I, I love my homegirl. So I said, please don't watch this because it's just not. It's just it's just too much, man. It's too much for me. 
and I've seen it. I watch a lot of things, but it's too much for me. So yeah. Um, yeah, we need they, 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 There needs to be better things in place for these, not only for child actors, but entertainers in general in acting, music, theater, whatever. And not just entertainers, regular day, nine to fives. There need to be better things in place, safeguards to protect these women, these men, these children, everyone. There needs to be better things in place. But um, yeah, that's my reaction to Daniel Snyder, quiet on the set, reaction, interview. But uh, like, comment, subscribe, share all the things or the things. This is a safe place for, to get any of your thoughts, whatever it is, out. As long as you're not being uh, disrespectful to the victims involved. But with that being said, love y'all. Appreciate y'all. One love.